Okay, in this presentation, we are going to look at game theory. So the matrix below shows the losses. That's important, just to sort of be mindful of that. Uh, to player A in a two player zero sum game, the strategies for player A are denoted one, two, three, and four. So it has four strategies. One, two, three, and four, okay? Now these are denominated in losses. So for example, minus 10 here actually signifies a gain of 10. And like for example, four signifies a loss of four units. Now you notice that we have two unknown values here, X and Y, okay? And really the question is about those, okay? So determine the values of X and Y for which there are dominated strategies for player A. So essentially you want to go through each of these strategies there, okay? And see what, uh, which are pr uh, better in every situation for pl player A. Just to sort of start off, let's have a look at strategies one and two. So essentially, things are better for player A, the smaller or more negative the number is, okay? So uh, minus 10 is less than four, minus eight is less than minus six, but unfortunately, minus three is not less than minus seven, okay? So in this case, uh, strategy one does not dominate strategy two and vice versa strategy two does not dominate strategy one so that's how it works okay now let's look at one and three okay so minus 10 is better than minus six minus three is not better than minus nine so no matter what happens one cannot dominate three and three cannot dominate one, okay? Okay, let's look at one and four. So one, four. Now, so minus 10 is always better than minus three or it's better than minus three, so that's good. Minus three is better than four, okay? Now, if y is greater than or equal to minus eight, that means that one can dominate four, okay? Strategy four, okay? So that is one situation. So determine the values for uh, X and Y for which there are dominated strategies. So one of them is that Y is greater than minus eight, okay? So the best way to answer this question is to go through them systematically. So essentially what I've done here is I have a, a list of them there. I've just mentioned a few already. For example, one will dominate four if y is greater than or equal to minus eight, and one and two do not denominate each other. So just finally, a quick remark, I'll just go through them. Three will dominate two if x is less than minus six, okay? So if x is less than minus six, that means that each possible outcome of three is better than two, okay? And three will dominate four if x is less than y. So you could just have a sort of quick comparison. So essentially that's the type of thing you're expected to do here. Just sort of list them out, go through them systematically. So there's four strategies there. So that's like six comparisons, okay? And that's it. So three cannot dominate one because one is better if strategy one is better if player one chooses their strategy one. And four cannot dominate any strategy since it gives the worst outcome if B, a player B chooses their strategy three. Okay, so the worst outcome there being four. Okay, the, the worst denominated outcome. Now, so... That's essentially it. So sort of a review of the whole thing, just w uh, walking and talking through the whole thing. So there exists dominated strategies if X is less than or equal to six or X is less than Y or Y is greater than minus eight. Okay, so that is it in a nutshell. It just takes time to walk through it, think through it, step-by-step -step comparisons side by side by comparisons of one strategy and the other and just sort of think through it like that. 
okay? Be patient with it. Now, the second question asks us, what well, actually is the second question? I'll just go back up. It's about saddle points. Determine whether there exists values of X and Y for which give that give rise to a saddle point, okay? So first off, the definition of a saddle point. A saddle point exists if an entry is both the largest in its column and the smallest in its row. Let's just look at that for a second. Let's look at column one, or row one. Okay, now the smallest value there is minus 10, but that's not the largest value in its column. So it's actually also the smallest value in its column. Okay, so we don't have a saddle point there in row one. So, Let's look at row three. Basically, we know the answers to this, or so we can tell, okay. So the lowest value here is minus nine, okay. But regardless of what X is, there's a higher value in its column, okay. So in that case, there's no saddle point in row three. So there's none in row one, none in row three, okay. So. It only can occur if it, if it occurs if it occurs at all. It can only occur in row two. Okay, the smallest values in row one, okay, and row three are not the largest in their columns, which I've just described. Okay, so x cannot give a saddle point because it this would require x less than or equal to eight to be the smallest in row two. Okay, but that would mean it is not the largest in its column. Okay, and similarly. Uh, y cannot give a saddle point as this would require y to be less than or equal to 8 uh, which means it is not the largest in its column either okay so essentially you know essentially they're both picking off that minus 8 there so if they're less th than that you know they can't be greater than the highest values else on, on their columns respectively Okay, that's the essentially the long and short of it. So there are no values of X and Y which give a saddle point. Okay, that's grand. We'll leave it there.